Hello everybody, I hope that you are doing great today. Um, I viewed a YouTube video recently and a man was teaching that it was wrong to speak of Christ having a pre-human existence. And he pointed out particularly the Jehovah Witnesses were in error on this issue and um, I was quite amazed at this because I figured that it's commonly accepted um, amongst most Christians that Christ is the Son of God and that he was sent by his Father from heaven to earth. So, um, you know, I was, I was taken aback that this man could make a video denying the pre-human existence of Christ. Um, scripture, I believe, is clear on this matter. Christ himself said, before Abraham existed, I am. That was at John chapter 8 and verse 58. And also we could read the words of John the Baptist. Uh, let's just take a quick look at John chapter 1 and verse 30. I'm using a New World Translation. That's John chapter 1 and verse 30 says... This is the one about whom I said, Behind me there comes a man who was advanced in front of me because he existed before me. Yeah, and, and the context of that, we clearly know that uh, John the Baptist there was referring to Christ. Um, so the man went on to point out about the reasons. Um, now, one of the, the uh, things that the Watchtower uh, taught was that um, when Christ was baptised and the scripture says the heavens were opened up to him, the memory of this pre-human existence returned to him. And Watchtower is absolutely, I agree with this guy, Watchtower is absolutely mistaken to teach that Christ had some memory, any memory at all of this pre-human existence returned to him. Um, you know, no, that, that cannot be right. And um, when I was a Jehovah Witness, you know, I figured that it, it can't be right that any memory, even the tiniest inkling of that pre-human existence, could be in the head of the man Christ, because that, that then would make him greater than the man Adam and not equal to Adam, something, uh, a being superior to Adam. If he had um, memory of being in the very presence of Father, if he had memory of uh, being a, a mighty human being, a mighty human, a mighty spirit, something greater than a human being, I mean, surely that would have empowered him and given him added um, strength, spiritual strength. And he would have been acting um, on that and less on uh, his faith. But, um, yeah, just looking at these words um, that Watchtower uses to teach Christ remembered his pre-human uh, existence. The words... Um, What is it? The heavens are opened up to him. Yeah. Let's have a look at John at Luke chapter three and verse twenty-one. That's Luke chapter three and verse twenty-one. Luke chapter three and verse twenty-one says, Now when all the people were baptized, Yeshua also was baptized. And as he was praying, the heaven was opened up. I've also got Matthew chapter 3, 16 down here. Let's have a look at Matthew chapter 3 and verse 16. Which says, After being baptised, Yeshua immediately came up from the water, and look, the heavens were opened up, and he saw descending like a dove God's Spirit coming upon him. 
And 17 also says, Look, also there was a voice from the heavens that said, This is my son, the beloved whom I have approved. Now Watchtower uses that scriptural account uh, and, and they read into it. Um, they assume that this means, they've wrongly assumed this means Christ had a memory of his pre-human existence returned to him. Yeah? We establish certainly without any shadow of a doubt that Christ did have a, a pre-human existence. But for Watchtower to say evidently, and I'm quoting them, I say evidently it means the memory of his pre-human life in heaven returns to him. I mean, that's crazy. Where, where's the evidence? This is what you call, I believe, eisegesis, reading into um, scripture, something that completely is just not there. Um... There are other instances of this uh, phrase, the heavens are opened up. We can read Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 1. Yes, Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 1. Sorry, I should have put a marker in that. Yeah, it's, um, it says... Now, it came about in the 30th year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day of the month, while I was in the midst of the exiled people by the river Chabar, that the heavens were opened and I began to see visions of God. Ezekiel speaking there. And verse 28, I think I've got written down here, it says... There was something like the appearance of the bow that occurs in the cloud mass on the day of a pouring rain. That is how the appearance was of the brightness round about. It's talking about this uh, vision of the uh, celestial chariot. It was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of Yah. When I got to see it and I fell upon my face and I began to hear the voice. I think that's the point I wanted to make with that verse. Uh, vision with a, a voice occurred to Ezekiel. Um, Acts chapter 7 and verse 56. Acts chapter 7 and verse 56 says, And he said, Look, Stephen, um, when he was being stoned, Look, I behold the heavens opened up, and the Son of Man standing at God's right hand. And Acts chapter 10 and verse 11 Acts chapter 10 and verse 11 says, And behold, heaven opened, and some sort of vessel descending like a great linen sheet being let down by its four extremities upon the earth. And verse 13, And a voice came to him, Rise, Peter, slaughter and eat. And Revelation chapter 19 and verse 11. That's so Revelation chapter 19 and verse 11. It says there, and I saw the heaven open, and look, a white horse, and the one seated upon it is called Faithful and True, and he judges and carries on war in righteousness. So we can see from these scriptures that the terminology heavens opened up is nothing unusual. What does it mean? Basically, in all of these instances, uh, visions were seen. Um, Sometimes voices were heard. And this is exactly what happened when Christ was baptised uh, by John. The vision of a dove was seen from heaven and a voice of, his, uh, of our Father was heard from heaven. And, and that's it. Just as the scripture says. Now, a watchtower really have just what, read so much into that about this evidently means Christ's pre-human existence returned to him. What? It's crazy. That is not what the scripture says. Literally, um, a vision was seen and a voice was heard from heaven. And that's it. That is it. Um, I wanted to point, I wanted to talk a little bit about... Um, John chapter... 
Hang on, here's what I have. John chapter 6 and verse 46. Sorry about that, lost my thought there a bit. John chapter 6 and verse 46. Which says, <clears throat> Not that any man has seen the Father, except he who is from God. This one has seen the Father. Okay, so we know that... Um, this is not... not talking literally and it's it certainly as I've pointed out it's not talking about some memory of his pre-human existence where he might have been able to recall um, literally seeing father um, and we know it's not talking literally um, We can compare Isaiah chapter 17 and verse 7. That's Isaiah chapter 17 and verse 7. It says there, In that day earthling man will look up to his maker and his own eyes will gaze at the Holy One of Israel himself. Yeah, so we can see from Isaiah chapter 17 and verse 7 that uh, from a human uh, standpoint, from uh, spiritually speaking, we can see Father. We can know him, we can uh, 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 have a close personal relationship with him, we can fully understand his personality, how he thinks, we can know his purpose, all of that. Yeah. Um, the scriptures say that his, our own eyes will gaze at the Holy One of Israel. Yeah, so it's not about literally seeing the Holy One, it's about um, perceiving his uh, personality, his will, his purpose, and um, uh, knowledge of him. That, that, that's what, knowing him and knowledge of him, that's what it means to really see the Holy One of Israel. And, um, and that's what Christ meant. He was the first person to really, in a fleshly form, to fully know and see the Father. So, um, Isaiah 54 and 13 I've got written down. So take a quick look at that one. Isaiah 54 and 13. Isaiah 54 and verse 13 says, And all your sons will be persons taught by Yah and the peace of your sons will be abundant. So it's not like Father um, is literally going to come and sit down at a table with each and everybody and teach them. Um, but through his Holy Spirit, we, we won't need anybody to teach us. We will all be persons taught by Yah through Father, through his Holy Spirit. Um, and it's a thought also... To debunk this, uh, you know, another avenue to debunk this idea that um, the Jehovah Witnesses teach that Christ's pre-human existence returned to him um, is the idea that when he was when he was a boy and um, his parents um, had to go looking for him and they found him, didn't they, um, in a temple. And at that time, he was teaching the um, older men, and they were astounded at his way of teaching. And um, he said to his parents, when, they, when Mary and Joseph, um, why did you have to go looking for me? Did you not know I must be in the house of my father? So we can see that um, before his baptism, Christ was taught, by means of Holy Spirit. Nobody taught, no, he didn't need anybody to teach him as a child. The Holy Spirit taught him. And um, he had a very close personal relationship with his father before um, his baptism. You know, the heavens being opened up did not suddenly mean that he, he had this relationship with his father that he didn't have, have before. It simply means that. Um, a vision was seen, the dove was seen and the father's voice was heard. 
And this was the uh, start of him embarking on his ministry, a you know, mission uh, for which he was sent to earth in the first place. So yeah, Watchtower was wrong to teach that Christ had any tiny little inkling of his pre-human existence that would have made him more than just a man. All right, I hope that it's okay and haven't waffled on too much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.